90% of us are walking around the world with no sense of how our behavior impacts others. Hey there, and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I'm your host, Kirby Hossman, and joining me today is a brand new rock star for the show, but I've had a chance to see her speak live in person. She's the author of The Good Fight, Using Productive Conflict to Get Your Team and Organization Back on Track. Leanne Davy, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Kirby. Thanks. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. So I just want to like, I want to start with the, with the good fight, right? Like I had the opportunity <laughs> to see you speak at SKU camp, an event uh, down in Austin, Texas. And it was awesome. I mean, it was like a workshop. You, you spoke for a good amount of time, really enjoyed it. But you know, right at the beginning, you know, you're saying, I was surprised when you're like, Hey, work conflict is great. It's healthy. I got to be honest, I was held back by that. And when I told my wife later, I'm like, she talked about how awesome conflict can be. And, and my wife, who avoids conflict at all costs, was like, I don't think so. So <laughs> I'm not buying it. Yeah, right. So can yeah. you talk a little bit about what you mean by that, about how work yeah. conflict can be healthy? So let's just start with the actual definition of conflict, because I think most of us don't realize conflict is just the struggle between incompatible and opposing needs, wishes, and demands. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, by noon on the average workday, most of us have come into contact with, I don't know, a dozen uh, spots where we've had incompatible or opposing needs, wishes, and demands. So we have to go back to that. It doesn't mean people are being nasty or bullying. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean conflict. There's no grenades involved. But uh, conflict can be healthy because it is the source of really hard discussions about trade-offs. And we know prioritization gets us more return on our investment. It's the source of innovation mm -hmm. when we can see things from different perspectives and appreciate divergent views. Uh, it's the source of risk mitigation. Uh, mm -hmm. If everybody was just like, what do you think of my plan? Yeah, it's good. Uh, <laughs> then you know, there would be so much risk happening. So, so conflict brings with it when we have conflict productively, it brings with it uh, all of the things that we're responsible for delivering as a team or as a business. Mm, man, that's really good. Because I think that's it. it. Conflict has this negative connotation because we think somebody's being a jerk, right? Yeah. And it's, it, it, it's just means that we, it, it, it reminds me of, you know, I, I think of it in that light, the way you just described it, of when I hear about different uh, things going on in the culture today, when I go to my daughter, my oldest daughter, and I go, what do you think about this? Because I'm yeah. not sure I buy this and I get her perspective, <laughs> right? That's yeah. kind of a healthy conflict because I'm- That's a very healthy conflict. Um, we, ha uh, we have a 21 year old and a 17 year old, and uh, there is a lot of, of healthy conflict, but I've found on many, many things these days, they've really helped me to see things with a new light. That yeah. conflict with them, which could be constructive at the dinner table, set me up to have healthier conversations with clients or, yeah. or just be in a better place. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And healthy conflict feels like tension. Mm. It feels like oh, that's stretching me in a direction I don't really go. It's kind of like the feeling of doing yoga. Right. Um, unhealthy conflict feels like friction, feels like mm. getting a blister. Like that's just rubbing me the wrong way. It's mm. slowing me down. So there is a difference. We, we definitely want that tension form, that yoga stretch in our thinking, okay. as opposed to that, what a jerk, that person's not listening to me. Yeah. You know, as I share my perspective, they just dig into their perspective. That's, that's unhealthy. And, and that's, none of us needs that in yeah. our lives. Especially not more of that, right? Like, no, <laughs> There's plenty of that. That's what Facebook is for, isn't that's it? Right. Or, that's or right. X or whatever. Yeah. 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 That's fair. Okay. So as as a leader, I think one of and I'll be honest, I mean, one of my challenges of the leader or being a leader is giving feedback. Because again, I don't want to be a jerk. I don't want to be whatever. So do you have advice for giving negative feedback? Yes. Okay. Yeah, of course okay. I do. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Well, can you help me with that? Maybe ask the question. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just being cheeky. Yeah. Um, okay, so the first thing is, let me clarify what feedback is, mm -hmm. because 90% of us get that wrong. So feedback is novel information for someone 
uh, about the impact of their behavior on others. And um, feedback is important because uh, about 95% of people believe that they are self-aware. Hmm. And the research shows that only about 10 to 15% of people actually are self-aware. <laughs> so the reason feedback is so important is like 90% of us are walking around the world with no sense of how our behavior impacts others. Hmm. The only way to bridge that gap is feedback. So when you're hmm. behaving in a certain way, you're making choices and you don't know that those are good or bad choices because you don't know the impact they're having. So mm. feedback is when I give you information about how your choices, your behavior impacted me. So mm. the first thing to say is that uh, by that standard, most of us aren't giving feedback ever. <laughs> right. What we're doing is we're, we're just passing judgment mm. uh, and, and sometimes it's positive. Uh, and it may be someone like, oh my God, Kirby, I loved being on your podcast. You're a great podcast host. <laughs> and you know, it, that might feel nice. It doesn't feel very nice right. because it feels a bit hollow. Um, and that's judgment. It's not feedback. Mm. If I told you how your behavior uh, actually affected me. So if I said, wow, uh, when you sent me the questions in advance with time for me to think about them and uh, you know, I came into this feeling much more confident, mm. much more prepared, and that is feedback. Mm. Your behavior um, and, and the impact it had on me. And what's interesting is if you get the description of the behavior right, the person should be nodding their head. And now it's easy when the example is something positive, but you asked about negative feedback. Yeah. Um, and so in that case, you just say, you know, when we were on our Zoom call this morning and you turned off your camera, right, right. as I started presenting, that would be an example of me describing someone's behavior. Then I wanna talk about what was the impact of their behavior. So I might say, it threw me way off my game. I started <laughs> worrying about, yeah. was this boring? Were you not engaged? I, I was starting to worry if something had happened to you and I wasn't focused on, uh, on what I was saying. That's a piece of feedback. So the yeah. novel, this is the stuff that kind of blows people's minds. The novel information in feedback is about you, mm. not about them. Mm. So whatever I said in the description of your behavior, you should be like, yep, that's true. Yeah, I did. That. I did turn off my camera <laughs> yeah. or I did send you the questions in advance. There should be nothing. It should be a giant yawn when you share the person's behavior. The novelty, the reason feedback is a gift is the, the truth of value in feedback is this new insight, this like, okay, I turned off and, and actually I literally the camera example I use all the time because it was true during COVID and um, I was with a team and somebody did turn off their camera at, at a key moment in a meeting. And I was talking to one of the people afterwards and they said, they told me the story. It really threw them off. They were so upset that she yeah. turned off her camera. So I said, well, why don't you talk to her about it? Why don't you let it give her the feedback, let her know how it threw you off your game. And it, and, and the person had told themselves this whole story about right. why she turned off her camera and how she was disinterested. She's like, you know what, my, my granddaughter was <laughs> sick today and she was home with me because my kids, you know, couldn't get off work. Yeah. And she, I all of a sudden saw, she was about to run behind my camera naked. <laughs> and she's like, I was worried children's aid was gonna call. That's why I turned off my camera. It was my naked grandkid. <laughs> and, and, and when this happened, of course, then there were lots of laughs, mm. but, it was such a great moment of connection among the, between the two of them, because first of all, it's like, you really thought that I wasn't interested in your presentation. Like what's with your self-confidence? Like, yeah. first of all, and, and, um, and wow, I didn't even realize you were coping with having a grandkid home, you know, pitching in for your kids. Mm, during yeah. the it just created this empathy and this connection. So feedback, is giving the gift of insight about how someone's behavior impacts you. Mm. Um, it is not passing judgment about whether you liked what they did or you think it was good or bad or anything else. Um, and, and that's what we get wrong all the time. We evaluate yep. people and pretend that that's feedback. And you know what? People don't like to be judged. So no mm -hmm. wonder they often get defensive. So we really want to 
move away from judgment, either positive judgment, praise, which is really hollow, mm. and instead switch to positive feedback, which tells them about how their behavior impacted you. So they know what was great and what they can do more of, but also making sure that when you're giving that negative feedback, um, you're very sterile and crisp about their behavior. And then the candor and the impact comes from you being vulnerable about, you know, this is how it affected me. So, you know, something quite different about feedback than where most people are at. Man, that's that, that, that's really good, Lee, and I, I appreciate you going into that. Um, and and I, yeah, you pleasure. know, I think that one of the things I do as a leader is I hear that and go, hmm, I'm not sure I'm getting that right. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, none of us is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really rough. Yeah. So, what are the times <laughs> when I sh when I shouldn't be? Uh, what what are examples of when I'm not giving feedback? Like, is there, are there examples of that? Of what, like, when I'm overstepping as a leader and not giving feedback, I'm doing something different. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I think about feedback as one of the blades in a Swiss Army knife of managerial tools. Mm -hmm. So feedback is for situations where um, it's subjective. There are different choices a person could make. So, you know, one of the things we often hear feedback about, just as a silly example, so you may listen to someone give a pitch. Mm -hmm. They're rehearsing their pitch. And you're, you know, the judgment would be to say, you went too fast. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You are not the objective owner of what's too fast and too slow. So you That's might say point. you got through all of that in 10 minutes. That's an objective way of saying it. And then you say, I, I feel like I haven't even digested it. Uh, like I I'm not I'm not caught up yet. That's the impact on you. Okay. So um, that's feedback. But that's because it's subjective, because somebody else listening to the same thing might have been like, you know, I, I was kind of twiddling my thumbs halfway right. through right so feedback suits situations where somebody is making a choice where there are lots of good options uh, and and just it's about how that option affected you there's also instruction and that's the case where no no there's not lots of it's like you're using the crm this is how you input it if you input the date this way it'll have the month and the day reversed like like the, that's instruction there's coaching and coaching is when um, you actually help the person think differently. You ask questions to help them find new ways to accomplish their own goals. Hmm. So, okay, what are you trying to achieve with this presentation? And if they say, I just want a super quick level set, then you might say, okay, so, uh, you know, what might you do to make sure the folks who are the furthest behind, you know, get to that kind of level playing field. So you've asked it as a question and you've let them say how long, how much detail. So that's coaching. And mm. um, you can give advice. And advice is when you wanna, based on your own life experiences, help them avoid some mistakes or mm. that sort of thing. And so you might say, I've noticed with this group, because I know them well, um, you can have their attention for about 20 minutes. So, um, you know, I appreciate that you were moving at a good clip, my advice is you, you might not have to go that quickly. You've got them for 20. Don't go beyond 20. Yeah. So, so there's, you know, what you'd never want to do is judgment, avoid the judgment, but there is feedback, there's instruction, there's coaching, there's advice. And of course, then as a manager, the last one in your, in your Swiss army knife is evaluation. And there are times when it's your job to assess their contribution relative to some standard either what their smart objective was or relative to other people on the team or something and that's okay it's okay to say that's my job i have to give you a rating or mm -hmm. yeah. um, so think about those five different kind of tools in your managerial swiss army mm -hmm. knife and the problem is we kind of talk about feedback as if it's supposed to be all of them it's like we just have one blade <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's only good for those cases where it's you know a choice where there are a spectrum of potential choices and we're trying to understand how those choices affect different humans everything else switch to a different tool yeah i i, I tell you what this is one of those things lee and i'm going to go back and I listen to this over and over again just because i feel like rep <laughs> repetition will be my friend on this yeah. if that makes sense because i think this will take practice but wow that's really powerful all right final question um okay. because one of the things that i know is Sometimes it's important to have difficult conversations, whether, you know, and difficult from yes. the person yes. 
giving the feedback <laughs> or, or instruction or whatever and the person receiving it. What do you do after it's done? Yeah, I love that question. Um, I'm doing a series. I've recorded them. They're not up yet on YouTube or my YouTube channel, a series of seven shorts in a row about difficult conversations. And it starts with how do you prepare for a difficult conversation? Because we don't do enough of that. But yeah. it ends with exactly what you're asking about, which is we don't just then get all awkward and, and run away. <laughs> I think about Beaker <laughs> on The Muppet Show, right? Anytime Beaker on The Muppet Show got into some kind of an uncomfortable conversation, you just like meep and, and run away. Yeah. And so if you have a difficult conversation, first of all, in the moment, try and have some kind of resolution to the conversation if you can, if you can handle it. So something to say, okay, let's kind of tie a bow around this phase of the conversation. So you might just say something like, you know, this was, this was uncomfortable for me. Um, I'm really grateful for you sticking in there with me through this. Mm -hmm. um, so the best way to kind of put a bow on it tends to be with some kind of a thank you. Mm. Um, and, and particularly if it was messy on your side. Yeah. Um, so, you know, often, for example, sometimes in a difficult conversation, I will have tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you don't want to do at the end of the difficult conversation is apologize for that. Oh, I'm so sorry I got emotional. No, don't apologize for being emotional. You should be proud of yourself for sticking with the difficult conversation. So shift instead to some kind of a thank you. Um, you know, thank you for sticking with me while I kind of got my thoughts clear on this. Yeah. Um, thank you for having the courage. Thank you for being candid with me about this. Mm -hmm. So something that just says, okay, you know, and, and maybe it's because I can't take any more in. <laughs> I'm going right. to blow or I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to break down something to end that phase. But that's not the final. It's like a Tchaikovsky ending. You need to have, you know, one more cannon boom later, which is to follow up after and follow up once you've had a chance to think through, was there some kind of a commitment you want to go back with? So, you know, that was a really difficult conversation. What I took away is X and what I'm committing to you is Y. Hmm. Or, um, you know, I'm so glad we had that conversation. I see things differently now. You know, if I got it right, you've agreed to do A and I'm going to do B. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the tie the loose ends. And then I think there's another opportunity um, to come back to, and it could be a month later, it could be six months later to go back to say, you know, I'm reflecting on that conversation we had and how much I value it on how it was a bit of an inflection point for me in how I really value our relationship mm. because of you know, your willingness to, to go there with me. And um, so I think if you think about sort of three endings, you know, what's the in the moment ending of the difficult conversation, then what's the action item kind of resolution to the difficult conversation. And then if it makes sense, you know, what's the relationship close to the conversation mm -hmm. that goes back to saying what it meant to you. So think about it. it that does sound like a Tchaikovsky kind of symphony. <laughs> there, there's all sorts of fake endings. But um, I, I think if you do that, people are going to, first of all, they're going to want to have more difficult conversations because it's going to feel rewarding. Right. Um, if you're telling people why you value them more as a team member, because they're willing to do that with you, and it's going to reinforce in your head that this is worth it. I know yeah. it's really ooky, but it's so worth it. Mm. Wow. Leanne, you covered a lot of ground here today. I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things, you know, the, the podcast is called Delivering Marketing Joy, but I think it, all of us listening to this are entrepreneurs, we're marketers, we end up being leaders in one form yeah. or another. And yeah. uh, whether it's through parenting, whatever. And so understanding uh, how to deal or create healthy conflict, but deal with, yeah. you know, all that sort of thing is really important. So where can people find more information about you? Yeah, two places. So um, on leannedavy.com, there are hundreds, hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of free resources. Um, the blog is fully searchable to over 600 articles and mm, downloadable wow. scripts and posters. Um, the YouTube channel, Dr. Leanne Davy, um, I put out a short and a long every week with instructions on, you know, how to deal with passive aggressive people, or as I said, uh, that series on difficult conversations. And then if you want to engage uh, LinkedIn, um, mm. I talk about LinkedIn as my LinkedIn couch. And I really <laughs> ask that people come and you know, grab a spot on the couch and engage in conversation. Uh, I love that. So one of those three places would be amazing. 
I love it. I love it. And and while you're doing that, maybe pick up the good fight uh, while you're uh, on Amazon or wherever you can get your books. So yeah. where fine books are sold, <laughs> whatever they, however they say that, yeah. where fine books are sold. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. I really appreciate it. I would love to do it again sometime. Absolutely. I would love that. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.